And now let's take a closer look at the trial. And to do that, we have former federal prosecutor, Sonny Hostin. Sonny, good to see you. Thanks for good coming in. Good to see in. you. What struck you the most about what we heard from the paramedics? Uh, Conrad Murray's behavior uh -huh. after they arrived there. I mean, it's sort of prosecutors want to show consciousness of guilt. They want to show that he didn't act the way normal doctors would act in a situation like this. So it, rather than attending his patient, he's grabbing drug vials. That is very unusual, and the prosecution wants the jurors to infer, well, he knew he had done something wrong. Mm -hmm. Something is just not right. That really is damaging evidence for him. I was going to say, the defense, of course, has not put on its case yet. I mean, if you're the defense, when you are, when it is your turn up the bat, what do you do? You've got to address it. You've got to explain that behavior. Certainly, a lot of people are saying, well, now Conrad Murray has to take the stand. That's very risky. I don't know that he's going to take a stand, but I always like to remind people Trials are marathons, not sprints. We're in the first week here. Hmm. This is a very, very good defense team. It's too soon to call it, but it isn't looking great in terms of, mm. of Comrade Murray. One of the paramedics said as soon as he arrived, he asked Dr. Murray about medications, and Dr. Murray said no. He, he gave no mention at all of, of propofol. Right. He did mention a light sleep drug. He said being evasive. I mean, how is the, the prosecution trying to spin that? Well, again, it looks like consciousness of guilt. I mean, he's a physician. If you're giving your patient something that your patient is supposed to have, why not tell the EMTs, the people that are there to help you and to help your patient, the truth? Well, he didn't mention propofol. He didn't mention a lot of the drugs that were in Michael Jackson's system. Again, consciousness of guilt, and that's what the prosecution wants to show. This is a doctor that wasn't behaving as a doctor. He was way beyond the standard of care, way beyond what a normal doctor in the same circumstance would do. The prosecution's case also was relying on this timeline of when Michael Jackson died, when was he declared dead, that kind of stuff. Yeah. What did we learn from that 911 tape that we heard? You know, I, I think the timeline is so crucial. And what we learned was 911 was called about 1220. We also know that around 11.49, he placed a call to a patient, 11.51, a call to a girlfriend, and then the call drops. Mm. So between 11.51 and 12.20, 911 wasn't called. That again is, who does that? Mm. Who doesn't call 911? A reasonable doctor would have called. A doctor deviating from the standard of care would not. We're talking about 30 minutes, and the EMTs mm. testify that when they got there, they thought Michael Jackson was already dead. Cool skin, eyes open, mouth agape, mm. hands, palms, you know, facing up. Looks like a dead body to them. Let me go back to something you said earlier. You said that it would be risky for Conrad Murray to take the stand. I mean, does he really have a choice in this case? I think so. I, again, very, very good defense team. They're probably, they haven't made that decision yet. They're, they're checking it out. They uh -huh. want to see how this case is going. Sure. Uh, I, I don't know that he'll testify. It's always so risky. We're talking about he has to be able to withstand cross-examination by these very, very seasoned prosecutors. Never a good idea, really, for a defendant to take the stand. Mm. Okay, Sonny Hostin, you'll be watching. We'll be talking to you. We thank, thank you so much for coming in today.